Hi, thanks for joining us. This is an ordinary Aussie house. Inside is one of the most popular and familiar Australians of all time. There'd hardly be a person alive in this country who hasn't at one time or another been enthralled by this colourful and yet controversial character. Funny, knowledgeable, but sometimes very, very annoying. But 40 years old and still going strong. So, who is the star of tonight's show? Come and find out. Thanks very much. Hi. Australian television, this is your life. Stand by, everybody. Here we come. All cameras ready. Ready on two. Stand by, Studio One. Good evening, and welcome to television. It uh, gives me a great deal of pleasure to be here tonight. To give you the taste of this new enterprise, Channel 9. And I'm quite sure that every South Australian will get a very great amount of pleasure and advantage from this fact. But luckily, our problem is simple to solve. It takes two plus seven to equal nine. Now that is a result which I think we can all be proud of. Television affects everyone, young and old. I wish the station well. That's the swing in a station in Ballarat. And I wish you listeners good viewing. Television turns 40 tonight, and Australia's first Asian Channel 9 is celebrating. We live the best of television drama, quiz and game shows, current affairs, overseas programs, kids' TV, comedy, all your favourite moments. The first. But this show tonight is going to make Ben Hur look like a B grade movie. That was a dead joy. You're not taking the things, Wood. The world really is wonderful. Mm. You've won the Morris Minor! Join Australia's leading personalities and some special guest presenters as they bring you television's unforgettable highlights. The magic memories, the familiar faces, and star performances from four decades of Aussie TV. You've got to stop. Look and listen, or you'll never know what you've been missing. You'll find the stars of variety in radio. We'll all come on to your house by a video when they're at home. By the fire, it won't be hard to realize your heart's desire. For the greatest sight you've ever seen, spend a night by a television screen. You're born on September 16th, 1956. The child of a marriage between theatre and technology. When you are born, you're eagerly welcomed. But being so young, there aren't that many watching you. Despite a less than auspicious beginning, by the time you're five, you're cheeky, cute, and looking for lots of attention. What do you do if you want a bit of attention? Oh, that's easy. I just throw a convulsion. <laughs> Ah! 
In your early teens, you are still interested in innocent pastimes. Do you remember this voice? It's your old pal, Skippy the Bush Kangaroo. Unfortunately, Skippy can't be here tonight, but he sends you this message. You know you shouldn't touch the radio, Skip. Thanks, Skippy. Not long after this period, in your late teens, your hormones go wild. Bloody hell, I thought you'd never leave. Me either. Where's the bedroom? Through there. And hurry up, we've only got an hour. Daddy. Bloody. In your 19th year, you become rebellious like many others your age. You break out in a rage of colour. What? I need to act. Ah, look, it's filling the room! How are we going to breathe? Quick out from the Wollongong air! I'll try and hold it down! There it is! Hey, look at me! Look at me! I'm in colour! Come on in! It's lovely! Although getting older and staying mostly in the lounge room, you're no couch potato. You love your sport and action, as your old friend Norm remembers too well. I'm oh, Norm. And being your normal Australian, I'm a sportsman. Any sort of sport, I'll be in it. For such a well-rounded entertainer, it's amazing how often you witness the nation's happiest and most tragic moments. Who could possibly forget your role in the news? All through your life, you rub shoulders with some of Australia's best-known faces. Men and women who just can't get enough of your basking glow. Unforgettable. That's what you are. Unforgettable. Though near or far Like a song of love That clings to me But even today, at the age of 40, and with a touch more respect coming from that grey in your antenna, you're still surprising us. Welcome to a fabulous program of cartoons, plus a barrel draw and prizes. Oh, well oh. smacked! Rip snorter of immersion. Oh, there he is, Sam Tutu. So now we can ask the big question in Australia can you play golf with maggots? Oh. Well, you don't believe that guy, do you? <laughs> Down my guts. Open wide. Straight in television, this is your life. And I was tonight, a show for you that is so happy and bright. With gaiety and music and such a happy crowd, we were doing. 
part of our celebrations tonight, we have a 40 years of TV trivia competition. The first prize is the fantastic new Toyota Prado RV, a stunning four-wheel drive valued at close to $40,000. Survive the city, no matter how tough it gets. Second prize is a Toyota style of life, the fun mini car from Toyota. And we have some consolation prizes as well. Five 68 centimetre stereo televisions from Sony, valued at $2,119 each. For your chance to win, you'll have to pay close attention, because I'll appear six times during the program to ask TV trivia questions. But don't worry, the answers will be in the show. Write your answers on the entry form provided in this week's Woman's Day, and send it to Post Office Box 7052, Sydney, New South Wales, 1181. Entries close September 30, and the winners will be published in Woman's Day. And so to the first question in our 40 years of TV trivia competition. Which variety show star is known as the King? Uh, uh. Hi, did you have to hit me with it? Couldn't you just make out that you were going to? Oh, no, I've got to hit you with it. Why's that? Because this is television. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be an old TV standard, but the pie in the face originated here in the theatre in vaudeville. In fact, the theatre is where many of our early television variety stars came from, and their routines and gags were first tested right here. Herbert, why don't we elope? Oh, don't do that. You'll cut us off without a penny. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like at least one penny. Oh, but I'd gladly give up my fortune for you. I'll tell Father he can keep his filthy mummy. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Well, we, we could we could start out with a do it. A what? We we could do it. We could do a do it. A do it. You mean a duet? A duet. You want to sing in unison? No, we can sing right here. My darling. My sweetheart. <gasps> My husband. <gasps> My wife. My goodness. My revenge. <laughs> My honor. <laughs> My hat! <laughs> well, we started out in the theatre, but we ended up here in the studio. Of course, the new television technology took the old routines and created something quite different, giving us a kind of TV program that will become both very familiar and very popular. Sketch and variety shows. After all, there's nothing like a good laugh. <laughs> oh, no wonder Louis Armstrong went black in the face when he took it. Well, now, would you like me to wrap it, or will I send it? Neither. I'll eat it here. Will you? Yes. Good girl. Eat it. It's number six. Go under the table. Television is primarily a visual medium, so sketch and variety shows tend to go for the more crowd-pleasing visual performances, or what is known in the business as a sight act. And the more dangerous or bizarre the stunt, the better.
What are you doing now? Oh, look out. Can you do this? <laughs> Come on. And you're going to go back far enough that it's going to get you up to 60 in that distance to here. So when this car actually comes at you, it's going to be 60. Is that it? Okay. Hey, is he all right? What happened? Hang on. Okay, Steve, go! Watch out for the $500 plate! Watch out for the $300 plate! Watch out for the $200 plate! Go, Steve, go! Go, Steve! Oh, no! He's lost! Oh, Steve! <laughs> It's all right. Oh, he's in shock. All right. Yeah. Listen, just leave him there. We'll get an ambulance. It'll be all right. Of course, the King, Graham Kennedy, made a habit of placing himself in mortal danger. It was a case of anything goes for a good laugh. Thou shalt not blow him up, <laughs> or drop stuff on him from a great height. <laughs> and that's final. In recent times, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, was a huge success. But it wasn't the first time that guys had featured in drag. Television cornered that market many years before. May I just have a look at it? What a gorgeous little thing. These blokes have been mates since they wear silver, and every now and then they get together for a good time. But tonight, Frank here has got a little out of control, and that's bad because he's going to have to drive home like that. Surprise! Guess where you're sleeping tonight? Well, that's probably the best offer Frank's had all week. I was walking home through the park, yes. and a man came up to me and he said, I'm going to kiss you. Oh, what did you do? Well, I said, if you kiss me, I'll clock you. And did you? Yeah, he kissed me, I clocked him, it took him a minute and 37 seconds. <laughs> now we put the legs apart, like this. We swing the body from side to side, you know. Beautiful! Then then stretch! Beautiful! Impersonation is said to be the greatest form of flattery. You be the judge. People don't realize this. Beautiful. <laughs> One of the Osmonds couldn't make it on the tour. This is the other brother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I'm not fantastic. I mean, you know, uh, heaven knows I'm the, I would be the last to deny the truth, you know. <laughs> Stop it, or you'll go blind. <laughs> of course, Variety has always had its sketches, blackouts, clowns, and even animal acts. But it somehow wouldn't be complete without a song. There's a song in the air, but the fair... Senorita doesn't seem to care for the song in the air. You make my pants wanna get up and dance. 
you make my face wanna grin. You make my knees wanna kneel down, say please. Honey, what's it this way again? <laughs> Perhaps no one entertainer can be all things to all people, so variety shows include a wide range of guests with all sorts of talents. And it's the job of the host to vary the intros and opening remarks as much as possible. But let's face it, there are only so many ways you can introduce people in a show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Don. But right now, here's the man to make the party swing. Good evening. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, how about a great big warm welcome, please? Let's welcome Rod Taylor. I'd like you to meet him now. So settle back, relax, and enjoy with us. Mr. Leonard Teal! <laughs> now it's time for our pooch of the week. I'm talking about Miss Jane Scully! I'd like you to meet that boy from the bush. Mr. Glenn Shore. The Queen of Pop herself, Debbie Byrne, and dude, dude, I can never get this right. Here they are, the Bal Karen Trio. But tonight, they dance. Well, thank you, Graham. Good evening, everybody. Would you all give a big hand to Bullen's Famous Elephants? <laughs> Thank you for that unexpected burst of applause. Bye, right, Lynn. Bye bye, everyone. See you later. Thanks so much, Ron. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye bye. Good night, everybody. Well, what can one learn from all of that? It's sometimes better to get off quick. So it's good night from me, and enjoy the rest of the show. October 20, 1964, Australians sat down in front of their TV sets to have a look at a new show. It was called Homicide and would make history. It was our first police drama series and the father of a long line of homegrown cop shows. Homicide's first victim was a university student, played by quiz show host Ian Turpey. Can I see your licence? In 1966, this nasty-looking character did the unthinkable and shot Leonard Teal. But Teal recovered and homicide continued for another nine years. And Gerard Kennedy drove down the road to join the team at Yarra Central Police Station as Sergeant Banner in... Division 4, a Crawford production. Yes, the boys from Yarra Central took up where Homicide left off, and even kept the hats. Come on, Hardy, out you come. You blokes cops. You expect anyone else? Inquiries. Sergeant Banner's partner also enjoyed a fine yes, police no, career. Form, Terence Donovan would be officer in charge at Cop Shop a few years later. My attitude. My attitude is, being put in charge of Riverside CI is like being appointed entertainment's director on the Titanic. The bad news is we're all doomed and time is running out. The good news is there's plenty of booze. You feel like a drink? Suburban police stations are one thing, but it takes a special breed to be a country copper, assigned to Matlock Police. <laughs> Matlock Police also gave Australians their first television motorcycle cop, me. Or, as I was known then, Constable Gary Hogan. The police station at Matlock closed down, but I didn't hang up the helmet. 
No, the motorbike resurfaced in Solo One. He's got to do it. Yeah. Oh, George! Then, a man with a big reputation and a bigger beer gut arrived at the scene of the crime. Seatbelt, Sarge. I want to get out in a hurry. His name? Bluey. His size? Extra large. The jury believes you planted that bomb. I don't... I didn't bloody... Sit out! I'll call for you, Sergeant. Take a message. Don't be too rough on him. More recently, with shows like Police Rescue and Water Rats, spectacular stunts are as much a part of the drama as the actors themselves. Of course, catching criminals is only part of the process. The criminal justice system also provided some great dramatic material for program makers over the years. We were taken to court as far back as 1961 in Consider Your Verdict. Well, I was frantic. I grabbed hold of his shirt and kept saying, what have you done to Mr. Betts? Did you get an answer? Yes. Um, finally, he said, I've killed the mongrel. And good riddance to him. <laughs> Consider Your Verdict was largely unscripted, with the actors playing things out as they might in a real court case. You will now retire and consider your verdict. Well, why did you wait two and a half hours before going up to this hotel suite? Because I hoped that my wife would come down. Here, a young Bronwyn Bishop shows her trademark tenacity as a lawyer in another courtroom drama, Divorce Court. He, he was the best friend of all. He was incredibly kind to me. And you'd do anything to help John Fry in return? I would indeed. Once the court system dealt with the wrongdoers, there was still a job to do. It was time to send them down, lock them up and throw away the key. Well, I don't know what all the fuss is about. It tastes all right to me. <laughs> Prisoner she showed life inside an all-female prison. The characters should have been put away for overacting. Instead, we were sentenced to watch it for seven years. I'm sorry, but we're not prepared to eat this. Aren't you? Well, that's up to you. You can eat it or starve. Doesn't bother me either way. I want to see the governor. Why don't you just sit down and eat your breakfast? She wants to see the governor. Yeah, she wants to see the governor. She, she wants to see the governor. She, she wants to see the governor. governor. She wants to see the governor. She wants to see the governor. She's going to get the governor. <laughs> I'm Rick Munro. This is Tim Jarrett. In an attempt to copy prisoner's success, punishment told the story of life at Longridge Prison. It lasted just long enough to give Mel Gibson one of his earliest TV roles. Evening, sir. But the fight for justice doesn't end with the clang of cell doors. There are also those outside the law, the men who work on the edge and live on the edge in a shadow world. The secret agents. Hunter. John Hunter. Australia's first secret agent and one of a kind, judging by his surfing ability and taste in clothes. Eve, what's the matter? Oh, I, I nearly collapsed when I got back after lunch. I, I was sort of a giddy spell. Tony Ward played the action man saving the free world and loving it. Following Hunter came an espionage series with a twist. Set in World War II, 
spy force followed the exploits of an army intelligence agent, played by a young Jack Thompson. Ever since the boys from Homicide slammed their first car door over 30 years ago, we've always had some kind of police drama on television. Nobody quite knows why we love cop shows. Maybe there's a detective, a secret agent, or even a motorcycle cop in all of us. But no matter what kind of law enforcer you are, the important thing to remember is... Keep in contact. SCU-3, over. Yes, sir, what's up? He's very agitated, unpredictable. Greetings from the Gold Coast. Yes, 41. Come in, 41. Chief Inspector Webb here. Who am I talking to? It's Alan Curtis, Shirley. Right. Expect to be another half hour or so. What? I haven't got any time. Two, three, four, five. How's that? Just give me a few moments. Yes, VKC. Any other units in the area? Yes, yeah, Sharon. Could you give him lunch and send him off to school? Now get to them before something else does. You confirm that order? That's an order. Got that, VKC. We'll attend. Thanks, VKC. All units cease radio transmission till further notice. What do I have to do to turn this thing off? What's a noisy spot now? Everyone can come, all of you, and a big brass band. Big bow, big bow, some sailing go. Oh, no, we're leaving for it. Are important. For most people, their first impression of television was as a child, and children's television was nothing like anything we would ever see again. It was a land where normal rules didn't apply, where wild animals put on pants, walked upright into our homes, and became our friends. Oh, Pat, you're so pretty. You are a silly Billy. My name's not Billy, it's Percy. I know your name is Percy, but you are a silly Billy. Oh, well, if only this woman would stop insulting me all the time. Oh, you know what we like, Fifi Bear. Yes, a, a nice, nice little fight to, to start the week right. While some bears could talk, we never heard from Humphrey, except when his suit got a bit dusty. <laughs> of course, only real animals were good enough for Glen Ridge. Let's have a look at a wombat, because really they're very practical animals, believe it or not, aren't they? He's a very pushy but he's a nice bloke. I'm not going to take you for a train ride now. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, you can have it now. It's amazing. Gee, Skip, you're only going to get one more stick and you're going to pick up the whole thing. Oh, excuse me. Seems I've given away a little TV secret. Yes, Skippy had a stand-in. But it's not just heroic marsupials that have stand-ins on children's television. People have them too. Of course, we call these stand-ins puppets. Do you know um, duck doo-doos? Duck doo-doos. They get really, really hot. You can feel the heat coming up off. No, I can't You can't do feel it. the heat. No, I can't do feel it. Feel the heat. Go on, feel no, it. No, it's just hot. Oh! I say pyjamas. Excuse me, is this the world's worst glove puppet? Let's call the whole thing off. It's a picture of a horse who's going for a gallop on a very wet track. <laughs> Hi! I look like a pirate! <laughs> this is the quiet spot. Quiet a noisy spot! And these oversized Aussie fruits are now more popular in America than Sesame Street. Mm. <gasps> are you thinking what I'm thinking, B1? I think I am, B2. It's finding out time. So what do you do if you can't get an amiable animal or a perky puppet to entertain the young'uns. That's right. Keep it happy, keep it colourful, keep it moving. And that's a lesson Kerry-Ann Kennelly learned early in television. 
What's on now, everybody and Kerry? Do you mind think we've got a cartoon, haven't we? We have, that's right, it's Popeye! Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> Pass it off, okay. Into there, now, use it, get in there, use it, hands everywhere, use your feet, where is it? <laughs> Okay, let's check out the porker with no pants on. La 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 la. Now that reminds me of an old saying. If something's too silly to say, then sing it. And that's a philosophy that just about sums up kids TV. You can't go wrong if you sing a song. It's a happy, happy day. He's a highfalutin' rootin' tootin' son of a gun from Arizona, wrecked and covered, yo. Woo-hoo-hoo! A boom, 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 ain't it great to be crazy? Boom, boom, ain't it great to be crazy? Giddy and foolish the whole day through. Boom, boom, ain't it great to be crazy? You're handsome, clever, witty worm who lives in a hole in the ground. <laughs> you brush your tooth and comb your hair when all your friends come round. Bend and stretch, reach for the sky, stand on feet oh, so high. There is actually one thing that really bugs me about children's TV. Why is it that on kids' shows you sometimes have to talk to the children as if there was something wrong with them? And this is going to be the hare's house. Do you know what a hare is? A hare is like a rabbit. Hello. I wonder if you're all ready for tonight's adventure in Adventure Island. Let's have a look and see what's going to happen tonight. Well, hello there, and a big welcome to all my little munchkin friends this morning. But kids' TV isn't just for munchkins. Since parents own the television sets and occasionally make the decisions, it made a lot of sense to keep the adults entertained in one way or another, in ways that would sometimes go right over the heads of the littlies. No charades, you know, you know. Oh, that. And oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yes, I know, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> so we've just got the shaving cream, right? We got our little Ken doll, we've got a blonde one here and we've got a brunette and we just broke him in half. It didn't hurt, I promise. We put some beautiful clothes on it and just split this up and... Oh! <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? So, your kitty lit a tray or mine? <laughs> In the early days of TV, it was hoped that television could help educate people in the home. And much of children's television still has this noble aim. Yep, if kids TV has its way, then the youngsters of today will be the mad scientists of tomorrow. <laughs> Here I am supporting the stick, not symmetrically. See this finger here and this one here? Are you not agreed that the support is asymmetric? Yes. Meaning not symmetric. So you see, I recommend Latin for the schools. Now listen guys, before you start windsurfing, you have to know how to swim. I thought this might be a good chance for um, us to activate the question scope and see if we can find out an answer here. Would you like to read out the question on this, Julian? If you have two plastic coffee cups, you can turn them into a helicopter. You really can. Who would have thought it could learn so much from the telly? But more than teaching and entertaining, television is a paradise, an oasis for children safe from the nastiness so prevalent in the adult world. Not. Listen here, Sheila. I started life as a mean, rotten, good-for-nothing rat thing, and that's the way I intend to stay. <laughs> No egg, just oh, a bit of bread will do, Marty. <laughs> 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 now, Hurry up. <gasps> Take it easy on him, Marty. You better pull your finger out. That'll serve you right, Marty. That'll serve you right. You asked for that. Oh, 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 oh,
and I'm going down to city square and sit in the city square and blow instruments of all kinds at all pitches until I find the, the resonant frequency of some fundamental steel member in city hall, set it into oscillation and destroy it. The answer to the next question in our 40 years of TV trivia competition is coming up after the commercial break. The question is, which quiz show has given away over $50 million in cash and prizes to date? Flea playing the fool. We've always enjoyed watching fellow Australians having a go on television. These types of programs fall naturally into categories. And in the spirit of game shows, we'll look at each of these categories and choose one as the outstanding example. Perhaps the most successful program, the longest running one, or maybe an old favourite. And so to our first category, quiz shows, in which contestants match minds to win prizes. A city in Victoria holds an annual festival which is called the Begonia Festival. I want you to tell me the name of the city. Geelong? Geelong? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was Ballarat. <laughs> it's your special subject. The Prime Ministers of Queen Victoria. Right, your questions begin now. Who was described as the Rupert of debate because of his parliamentary... Stanley. No, it was Darby. Lord Derby. Under... Stanley, uh, I, may I challenge that? Yes, we do accept. We accept your challenge. Stanley already. was Derby. Yes, we have accepted. Younger contestants with equally strange interests went on jeopardy. Uh, what do you do after school normally, Elizabeth? Oh, I play the violin. I like chess, squash and collecting cone shells that are spiralled anti-clockwise. Uh, cone shells spiralled <laughs> anti-clockwise. That's right. Yeah, that's interesting. Another interesting competitor was Jimmy Hannon, who made his television debut in 1956. Oh, name that tune! Can you name this tune? Yeah, oh, <laughs> heat wave. A heat wave is right, a tropical heat wave. You, together with Miss Poole, have won 35 pounds. One of TV's most popular quiz shows gave us the phrase... The money of the box. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, she's taking the box. She's taking it. <laughs> wait a minute, where's that gentleman? Get a look at that. Who's that gentleman who yelled out? Well, wait a minute, let's see who said it. Would you stand up, sir? I want to see this gentleman, honey. What did you say, sir? Hey, Honey, is that, is that a friend of yours? No. <laughs> Honey, he is a friend. You've won the Morris Minor. In 1960, we met a confident young man who was to become a household name. Bob, this is Barry Jennings from Caulfield, a school teacher. Oh, Barry. Did Have you it, hear that, Bill? I heard it. Sound <laughs> ominous to you? Sounds ominous. And ominous it was. Barry went on to become undefeated champion for an amazing seven years, a record for Australian television. But the winner of our Quiz Show Award is a program which has been on air for an incredible 17 years and to date has given away over $50 million in cash and prizes. All on the world's richest quiz, Sail of the Century. Thanks very much and good evening everybody. Welcome to our brand new super quiz. We hope we'll have your undivided attention for the next 30 minutes because in that time we're going to produce the first sale of the century champion. Let's have a look at a couple of things through it all. $676,790,000 worth of prizes and money which you've won. You've gone into the Guinness Book of Records and we're right. There is another type of game show where the questions are, well, a bit more personal. And after all, all's fair in love and television. As complete strangers partner up. On the love game. And now here he is, the man behind the heart, Mark Holden. If love goes to your head like a glass of champagne, let's get intoxicated. Linda, do you like Qantas stewards? Well, it depends on the steward. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Blind Dates. Tanya Widowson, please meet John Smelt. <laughs> All dating shows may look the same, but one stood out because it had a star with personality, 
charm, charisma and a head for statistics. That star, of course, is Dexter the Robot from our award winner. What have you got? You got a perfect match. Well, you can take it from me, Tony. You'd better keep the tight grip on your heartstrings because your perfect match with a compatibility score of 71% is... Kate, you selfish cow. Have more consideration for other people. How would you react to that? How would I react to that? This is how to react to that. Whoa! Yes, he deserved that. And now the talent shows. They've given average people the opportunity to perform on TV. Although, really, some should have stayed at home. Just me and you. And you and me. Well, I wish they would take me away. Let them all fade away and leave us alone. In our world, on our own. Bowie knife, Bowie knife, long blade of steel. He my gun, don't take your evil life. You can bet my Bowie knife will help me, help me. I'm gonna die. Get a doctor. No Bowie knife, you die. For some people, one shot of fame isn't enough. Dan, Dan can you see that? Some TV personalities use talent shows to kickstart their career. One was Full Frontal's Julia Morris. Another celebrity didn't handle the tune quite as well as Julia, though. I'm holding up for a hero to the end of the night. While some acts flex their vocal cords, others flex their hamstrings to breaking point. Hey. You've done it, have you? Yeah. Oh, I think he's done a hamstring there, you're right. There have been many talent shows over the years, but our favourite is the show which was on our screens for over 30 years, New Faces. But it too did have its fair share of turkeys. But then if that sort of life is what you wish, There are lots of winners and lots of winning moments in shows where the public have a go on TV. But of course, for every winner, there must be a loser. And for every highlight, a low light. We'll leave you now with 40 years of both. <laughs> All top money spinner becomes our champion. 22 weeks it ran and boom, three cups right in the balls. <laughs> my hands are never below my waist. Aren't they now? No, is, is there a reason for this? Well, mother said never to do it. Oh, <laughs> But he's still wearing glasses. <laughs> Thank you very much for supporting me over 100 shows in our cast and crew.
direction. The Boeing's out. You've got to go by Dragon. Oh. <laughs> Have you got that key? You got it or you want me to run through it again? Stay tuned to 40 Years of Television as Henry Winkler tours your favourite overseas programs. Dita Brummer will take a look at the standout soap operas and Craig. sitcoms. Craig, it's poor Ted. He's going to die. <laughs> we review the best pop music shows. Hi, fellow hi-fi. I've always watched... And after the break, Ray Martin investigates the story behind Current Affairs TV. Mr Steele, this isn't your house. You've been accused of man bashing. Yeah, and it's going right? to happen right here. So do you want to do a decent interview or do you want to leave? To protect your future, he will erase your past. I'll keep you alive, trust me. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Come and get me. Eraser. For some reason, Australians have always watched television for information as well as entertainment. More so than in America or in Britain. In fact, current affairs shows have long been among the most popular and the highest rating programs of the lot. Maybe it's isolation, but current affairs shows act as a kind of lens on the world outside our day-to-day -day experience. Focusing on politics and controversies, on corruption and crime. There is another side to the Sunshine State. This award-winning Four Corners report, for example, put the Queensland Police Force under the blowtorch. It acted as a kind of catalyst to the eventual downfall of that state's entrenched government. There's a strong case to show that instead of prosecuting these people, the police prefer to protect them. Were you aware that there would be warnings if a, a raid was to occur? Yes, yes, because there was a back entrance that we were told we could leave from if there was going to be a raid. A nationwide manhunt was the result of this page one report on John Friedrich's role in the mishandling of public money by the Victorian branch of the National Safety Council. In fact, the changes under Friedrich's stewardship were massive. Everything about this base was modern, high-tech, sophisticated, expensive. A fleet of jets, prop jets, helicopters, a recompression chamber for eight people and deep diving equipment. How much debt does the company carry? I think it's a uh, pass. I understand, according to the 1987 Treasurer's report, it stood at $58 million. Mm. As I said to you, we, we borrow to satisfy the requirements. When, on July the 7th this year, in the 8pm time slot, ABC television viewers were treated to this story on the program Great Ideas, they could have no idea about how the story was selected, reported and prepared for broadcast. The revelation that some ABC programs were receiving commercial funding led to management changes after this Sunday story went to air. I mean, did the penny click then that this was a situation in which you were doing a story for primetime ABC TV, which was being paid for by this company? Well, of course. I mean, that's exactly what it was. It doesn't always come down to investigating financial deals, though. One of the earliest reports for 60 Minutes looked at the use of controversial and deadly medicine at a notorious Sydney private hospital. A lot of people knew about that Chelmsford Hospital, what was going on there. Barry Hart, like other patients at Chelmsford, was subjected to shock treatment combined with narcosis. Apart from the seven deaths, there were a number who suffered serious physical complications, including paralysis and brain damage. I had these tremendous pains in my shoulders and I tried to alleviate the pain by moving my arms around and, and I couldn't do it because my arms were strapped. And um, one of the nurses said to me, she said, look, if I was you, I'd get out of here. She said, Hang on, a nurse in the hospital? Yes, a nurse in the hospital said, if I was you, I'd get out of here. She said, you're sick, you know, you won't get treated for what's wrong with you in here. Not every story, of course, has to be an award winner. But the dogged persistence needed to clean up politics and the medical establishment could also come in handy when chasing charlatans and other colourful characters. It takes commitment and old-fashioned courage by both the reporter and the camera crew. 
Mr. Llewellyn, we'd just like to ask you some questions. Why won't you talk to us, Mr. Llewellyn? It's the case. Is there no way we can talk? Hello, it's just home with me. Mr. Skates, I've got Mr. Skates. Mr. Steele, this isn't your house. Hey! Mr. Steele, this isn't your house. Excuse me. Mr. Steele, you're supposed to have an allocation That's number. That's right, here. Do you know if I've got an allocation or not, stupid? I'm asking you, do you have None an allocation None of your business, number? you understand? Davidson kicked our cameraman in the crutch. <laughs> But he didn't stop there. Now don't be silly. You want to go on assault as well? Get off me, mate. Well, stop pushing that in my face. Children, why won't you have... Is that all you... So, no, leave the camera on. Don't hit the camera. Don't hit the camera, all right? They're out of the way. They're out of the way. They're out All right. Back in the safety of the studio, the political interview can still pack quite a punch. Like this single question from Mike Willisey. In the hot seat was the then federal opposition leader John Hewson. And it seemed simple enough. But this moment virtually unraveled Mr Hewson's election chances. This is the question. Would a birthday cake cost more or less under a goods and services tax? To, to give you an accurate answer, I need to know exactly what type of cake to, to give a detailed answer. I mean, if it's just a cake from a cake shop that is not presently subject to sales yeah, tax, okay. it will not attract the GST. But, isn't, isn't but if it is a cake shop, a cake from a shop that has sales tax and it's decorated and candles, as you say, that attract sales tax, then, of course, we scrap the sales tax yep. before the GST okay, would be imposed. It's just an example. Hmm. If the answer to a birthday cake is so complex, you do have a problem with the overall GST, don't you? But the interviewer doesn't always enjoy the upper hand or always listen. Here, Andrew Peacock is announcing his response to a colleague's criticism. But I reviewed very carefully uh, in the time since I arrived in Perth those remarks and I've spoken to uh, Senator Lewis and uh, I've dismissed him from the shadow cabinet, regrettably. Are you annoyed at what he said today? This is the last thing you need coming to Perth. Have you ticked him off? Have you rung him up? This is an extraordinary interview. I don't believe it. I just gave you the scoop of the day. I said to you on arrival in Perth, I rang Senator Lewis yes. and I dismissed you. Did you get the message yes. this time? Yes, I did. Now, as a journalist, you pray for a scoop like that to land in your lap. But the studio can often be an uncomfortable place especially during an interview which isn't going well. By my formula of talking and not by hitting people around the head. But do you think... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? And, well, wait a minute. Why are you, you yourself asking these sorts of questions? Because it has been exactly... Do you have doubts? Oh, that's... I'm questioning you, Prime Minister. It's, but I'm it's allowed been... to ask questions. This is a conversation. I'm sorry, old boy, but you, you've been so occupied and with such success in the television world that you haven't been reading your parliamentary debates. I've got a point I want to make. Don't be rude. Well, the don't you be rude to me. Let me finish what I'm saying. I've been at lunch all day, one of those very long lunches. I guess you could say I'm slightly pissed, <laughs> but... I beg your pardon. I said your godlike figure is I happy to be... I beg your a... pardon. Whoever you happen to be. I'm saying to you... But that's we why you the have these we... fights, Mr Hawke. All right. Well, look, if you want to go on like that, if you think you're going to put up your ratings like that, do it. You've been Turn accused... Turn that thing off. You've been accused of man bashing. Yeah, and it's going right? to happen right here. But current affairs television is not always about confrontation. It's often about cooperation, working together to help out battlers in need. A chance to show the positive side of life and the courage of the human spirit. These stories are amongst our strongest and our warmest memories. I just want to say, couldn't have done it without you, Victoria. Thank you very much. See you later. Off the Queensland, you get it. Our Prime Minister Paul Keating sent a fax from Tokyo today, saying that he will match every dollar for a dollar, 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 raised through farmhand appeal. Victoria rallied.
New South Wales has rallied, Queensland, there's a lot of people out there who really care about you. Well, it's just unreal to think that somebody's down there thinking of you. So it just sort of really brings a lump in the throat and a tear in the eye. But... When you see other kids who are seven walking and running, yeah. do you get a bit jealous sometimes? Yeah. You'd like to do that? Yeah. And you've got a chance of walking, haven't you? Yes and no. Well, I say yes, but you might say no. I don't say no. I say yes. We're aiming this time to get them good enough to go back to uh, Bougainville. That's a, that's a pretty large uh, ask, and I don't know whether we'll get that far. And this is the medical miracle before your very eyes. A fortnight ago, these two tiny girls came into this world together, literally. Tonight, their new lives begin. Still identical, still special, but now free to lead their own separate lives. Born three months premature, Eve needed 11 blood transfusions to live. Her parents now know that at least one of those transfusions contained the AIDS virus. Eve now has AIDS. The authorities have decided that little Eve constitutes an unacceptable risk. So for the time being, she's forced to stay on the outside, looking in. We'll show. To start, take a very large mixing bowl and add the first ingredient. Some mums and dads. Really? Oh, oh that's terrible. It's poor Ted. He's going to die. <laughs> Ted, why don't we have tea now, dear? I'm hungry. Doc, I've just explained to you after a hard day's work, I want to get home, sit down for five minutes and have a quiet read of the paper. <laughs> Man's been on the go all day. We try to teach Terry the difference between right and wrong. Then you come home looking like like that. Now, now what sort of an example is that? Ah, oh, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. He got into a blue. It's not the end of the world. But what if it caused this other boy some serious injury? Hmm? The police could be involved. Of course, no family would be complete without some troublemaking children. Just because he's a bit sophisticated. Oh, just because he's a bit of a cretin. Just because he's not a football head and he's into art and culture. Oh. Well, at least he doesn't go posing around in tight little running shorts and t-shirts with the sleeves cut off. Hi. Oh. You still mad at me? I see. Dad, will you hurry up? I want to go over you before she gets here. Yeah, that's a good... Listen, incidentally, tell him, would he wash his nails and go and wash behind his ears? They get very sneaky, those people. No, I'm... When it comes to good eggs, you can't go past doctors. Maintain half-hourly neuro-obs. Let me know if diastolic goes above 110. Yes, doctor. His BP's 170 over 90. No change. He seems to be stable at the moment. You won't be needing further, Sean? No, not right now. I was up all night with Nigel, looking for some sort of improvement in Debbie. Mm. How's he taking it? As badly as any of us would. And what about Helen? I sent her home. His name is Bates. Philip Bates, and aged about 36. Oh, do you know him, do you, George? Yes, I know Philip Bates. Perhaps you can help me with his medical history. I can tell you about his history, but not the medical side. Tom, it's Chris. Peter Varney's just reported what sounds like a hypothermia case on Sundown Station. As I understand the condition of the patient, he could be in need of urgent assistance. Are you anywhere nearby? Uh, yeah, you want us to handle it? Can you? Sure. Hmm, a bit too sweet. We need something bitter, like a resident bitch, a matron, or better still, a local councillor. It has been brought to my attention that final notices have not been reached in their intended destinations, particularly in the case of notoriously delinquent ratepayers. You're in the way, Mr. Martin. Why should people be allowed to have council amenities and services and not carry their share of the cost? Eh? And why weren't the, the rate notices delivered? I think it's time I was frank. I don't like you. I never have. The most sensible thing for you to do would be to pack your bags and leave. All you can do here is get in the way. What if I said I was sorry? You should have made that apology to the many students whose studies you've disrupted over the years. 
What's the use? I hope I'll never see you again as long as I live! I'd like you to know that this childish initiation ceremony is frowned upon by every sensible member of the hospital staff. And I know from past experience you will only succeed in disrupting the smooth running of this hospital no matter what you may plan to do. For those who like an adult taste, add something a bit naughty. Who's in there? Just me. Channel 12. What are you doing? My sister's getting married. Oh, I've got to pick stuff up. Really? What's the time? You've had your fun, now you're leaving. Jennifer, you know I want to stay. Well, don't let me keep you. Come in. I'm sorry I'm, I'm late, no, but... but... <sighs> Madam, I'm not even sure if I know your husband. Who? Unless he's one of these. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to stir, but remember, it's important to use a big stirrer, like the local gossip. Yes, Elsie, of course I'm still a member of the Bowling Club Associates. Resigned, where did you hear that? <laughs> Consumed! Consumed! Oh, really? The poems, the flowers, the letters, telegrams, I can hardly Oh, I'm sure you'll manage. If only he were so rich, the social world can be very tired. Especially imagine. And guess who was driving? Who? None other than Mrs. Iris Pendleton, who owns the gymnasium, no less. Never. Well, I don't know what things are coming to. I tell you, Miriam, this arcade's nothing but a breeding ground for gypsies. Throw in one or two less uh, intelligent characters to guarantee a few laughs. Well, there it is. <laughs> Are you uh, keeping it warm for me? Uh, no, I'm sort of stuck. Oh, let me help you out. Oh, no. No, no it's no, no travel at all. Oh, 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 excuse me. Oh, oh it's cold. Excuse me. <laughs> well, I always want to be somebody important, you know, like a teacher. A teacher? <laughs> yeah, always want to say... Who are you, boys and girls? <laughs> and for the boys and girls to say to me, Who are you, miss? <laughs> Indecisive me, I am not. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose I could be at times, but I, 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 on the other hand, sometimes I'm quite decisive, I think. I remember the first time I played a gig in public with Still Waters. Man, I was freaking out. <laughs> it was old all this night, you know. <laughs> 1969, I remember. Because that guy, uh, Neil Diamond, he just walked on the moon, yeah. <laughs> the death of a popular character always gets people talking, but since it takes a long time to organise an interesting death, here are some I prepared earlier. What's that? Can't hear anything? these ingredients will give you a drama or comedy that the whole family will enjoy but it still needs that finishing touch that little something to make it special and over the past 40 years there has been one surefire method used over and over it's the classic soapy moment the wedding I did.
Desmond Kingsley take you, Daphne Rose, to be my wife? Jeffrey, do you take Kate Joslyn Willings as your wife? I do. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish, till death us do part. I do. Do this. The wedding's got to stop. Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. Thursday, Friday, happy days. The weekend comes, the cycle hums, ready to race to you. These days are ah, happy and free. Oh, happy days. These days are ah, ah, ah. This program are fair dinkum Aussie shows. In fact, many of Australia's favorites weren't homegrown, but came from overseas. My home, America, was where they were largely from. And like us Americans, you Aussies just couldn't get enough of them. Tough and uncompromising dragnet set the tone for the hard-boiled cop. Reality. What's your name, son? My name's Blue Boy. What do you think, Joe? Cardwheels? Sugar cubes. I'll make you book. He's been dropping that acid we've been hearing about. All right, son. You're under arrest. It's our duty to advise you of your constitutional rights. How many others? I don't know, plenty. Five hundred. I don't know. Five hundred. No, no, maybe twelve, fifteen, maybe more. You know any of the names? I haven't even seen them. How do you know how many? I don't know, I'm guessing. More than one to a school? I can't tell you anymore! You haven't told me anything yet! million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. Of course, you could always hire a private detective for around $100 a day, plus expenses. I haven't much time. I'm supposed to be out shopping and the store's closed in about a half an hour. Uh -huh. uh, you're supposed to say you're sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Thanks. You're polite, even if you don't flirt well. Wrong time of day. I'll try you when? After cocktails? Dinner? Tentatively about 6.30. Yeah, I feel better already. Why am I? I understand you both know a Mr. Vito. Joey Vito. Yes. Oh, yes, we certainly do. He's a very talented man. He has several talents. Among them, murder. 77, Sunset, Strip, and Hawaiian Eye brought some glamour to the trade. Years later, location was the same, but the P.I.'s name was... Magnum. One Hawaiian-based detective with no time for relaxation was the inscrutable Steve McGarrett. Book of Dano. Outacted only by his hair, he had all the baddies taking cover behind the palm trees. My son is dead, McGarrett. Dead, and you killed him. No, Bashan, no. I shot him. You killed him. You and his grandfather a long time ago. But while McGarrett played it straight and down the line, other detectives were a little more, well, idiosyncratic. I'm from the police, sir. My name is uh, Columbo. Lieutenant Columbo? Yes, Lieutenant? I'm terribly sorry to disturb you, sir, but we have this report uh, about this shooting. While Columbo hid a steel trap mine under a scruffy exterior with a lawman, what you saw was what you got. A gun barrel straight upholder of the law.
You just stepped over the line. Drop that gun. I'm holding on to what's mine, Troop. Him and the gun. Nobody's taking them away from me. Alan, the gun. You're under arrest. A whole posse of Westerns had ridden onto the box, and they had their heyday in the early 60s when there were no less than two dozen on the small screen. Well, it seems to me any fella gets to be 17 and still hasn't learned to stand up straight and take his hat off to a lady, pretty near hopeless. I'll stand up. I realize that all you guys have heard of my reputation with a gun, but I don't do much of that anymore. Kind of outgrown it. I leave that up to the guys who just want to look good. You know, the showboats? Now when I pull a gun, I use it. Now, by the start of the 70s, Westerns were disappearing with only about five left, but two of the survivors were by far the biggest. Gun smoke. That scared me to death. If I'd known it was you, I wouldn't have fired. Do you know where you are? Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Put those hands up. If you put them down before you're told, you're dead, mister. If you know who I am, then you know you're on the Ponderosa. I'm sorry, now, after riding off into the sunset in the mid-70s, Westerns made a comeback when a medicine woman rode into town in the 90s. Spleen's enlarged. I think what we're looking at here is a case of malaria. Now, certainly medicine has changed quite a bit since Dr. Quinn's time, but old-fashioned doctorly concern never goes out of style. You're doing fine, Mrs. Padilla. Just fine. I'll stop by to see you again in two weeks. When is this? Yes, Doctor. We have to schedule Mr. Applebaum for surgery right away. Later, well, I don't think we can wait, Ben. Look, call orthopedics and schedule him. You're not a medical student. You're a resident in neurosurgery. You need somebody to keep after him every minute. Somebody strong enough to say you can't give up. Mrs. Foray isn't strong enough. Neither is his son. His daughter would have been. Yeah, but she's dead. Maybe Jesse could take her place. And Foray could take the place of the father. On a drug screen right away. Two milligrams of Narcan and an Ampid 50. You want a pumper? Yep. Why'd she do it? Doesn't matter why she did it. We don't ask that about any other OD that comes through these doors. We don't ask it about this one. Well, wait, close the curtain. This isn't a show over here, people. And I have a bleeder here. Will you help me spend the time, please? Yes, doctor. Get your rear in gear, Margaret. When the MASH medicos weren't patching up wounded soldiers, they were doing their best to forget the war. And in doing so, they gave us one of television's longest-running comedies. You better not bump into Henry and that general. I intend only to bump into Nurse Baker. Repeatedly, if possible. <laughs> Sitcoms and their stars have always been a major part of television viewing. The characters are usually ordinary, everyday people in ordinary, everyday homes. And on second thought, maybe not so ordinary. Tracy, upstairs? The caller on the phone to talk to her upstairs? What's the matter, yelling out the window is too good for you now? What, was it raining out? Yelling out the window is bad manners. Don't you make any nasty remarks about my mother. She's been yelling out the window for 80 years. Yeah, and before she lost her voice, there were more people listening to her than to Amos and Andy. I write a check to the beauty parlor every month. Yes, I know that. But they don't always have a little note in the back like this one. Dear teller, be a lamb and don't put this through till next month. <laughs> now, what do you got to say for yourself? That's why they call them tellers. They go around blabbing everything they know. Jesus, I did it for your own good. He was deceiving you. He was telling you your stuff was great. He knew it wasn't. That's your opinion, huh? It's not my opinion, it's my professional judgment. I am a writer, you know. I don't accept the judgment of a man who puts ketchup on his salad. I like ketchup, it's like tomato wine. Clarence, would you like more potatoes? Thanks, Mrs. Cleaver. <laughs> I 
I'd like some too, if there's any left. <laughs> Thanks. No! I'm tired of being treated like a baby! Well, then stop acting like one! Oh, Dad, oh, you I was acting like a baby! I don't care! She's not gonna come home and start telling her! I'm not being told! I was so lucky to have a family of my own on television, the Cunninghams. And with my character, the Fonz, coming to their rescue, life was mostly smooth sailing. But TV families in the 90s deal with problems never faced before. Al, we have not moved an inch in two hours. Peg, I can hear that in our bedroom. <laughs> now just shut up and let me enjoy myself. I could hear that in our bedroom too, honey. <laughs> Cops, cowboys, comedies, we love them all at the time, and we love them still. They've become as familiar as members of our own families. But surely 40 years isn't enough, after all. The series and sitcoms now on TV will continue to provide us with mutual happy memories. After this break is the answer to our Lifestyle Show's trivia question. What was the original name of the program which became Beyond 2000? and bring in educational features where it is possible, breaking them down so that all will, um, you know, sort of enjoy them. You mean, in other words, uh, enjoyable educational section? Yes, I think that might be the whole thing, enjoyable educational. Enjoyable education, or infotainment as it's known now, attracts big audiences by showing us how to dress, cook, manage our money, how to look after our homes and our backyards. But most importantly, they're fun and informative. It's questionable whether the same could be said about their early counterparts, which may have been educational, but not big on entertainment. To prevent steel wool from rusting, Squeeze as dry as possible each time you use it and stand it on an old upturned aluminium saucepan then. That way you will prevent any rust. Right, left. Really, Banger? Got to give yourself a hiding today. These are the little pop-out trays that you can uh, use the ice in, you give them a twist, they're plastic, but you see a, a mark or a shadow on the inside of each one, well they're strawberries or cherries or any pieces of fruit that you like. Obviously there was some fine tuning to be done. In the 1970s, infotainment diversified by moving away from home life and adding a little entertainment. Now we've already picked the first car for our test and it's Leyland's P76 V8 Executive. Fairly recently, it was awarded the Wheels Magazine Car of the Year Award. And as well, in its pre-release advertising, Leyland called it anything but average. Well, as it happens, I think it's exactly average. Inventor Robert Collins has constructed a sundial which allows direct reading of the time together with the reading of the date. It is the most beautiful piece of sculpture and lovely artwork, and I'd like to get down to the nitty-gritty of it, the way that it works. If it's cloudy, I'm not going to see anything. Well, that applies to all sundials. And of course, if it's nighttime, we would have to have a luminous dial, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't apply. This inflatable cushion has two chambers which are interconnected. Each section is large enough to take a foot. By semi-inflating, it's possible to transfer the air from one section to the other, keeping your secretary busy exercising her feet while she attends to her nails. <laughs> How times have changed. Well, they were certainly informative. Entertaining, perhaps, but not exactly educational. Combining all three, this fabulous century was a huge success in 1979 with its nostalgic look at Australia. This plain little monument is our only official reminder to the first day of this fabulous century. You must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss, a sigh is just a sigh. The fundamental things apply as time goes by. While this fabulous century looked at our country's history, This Is Your Life took a peek into the lives of famous Australians. From Storm Boy, your co-star Greg Rowe, and from Marineland Adelaide, Mr. Percival with his trainer, Rick Goodfellow.
This Is Your Life made a comeback in 1995 and today is one of Australia's most popular shows. See you when I have my baby. <laughs> as, as happens with life, um, we've heard only just in the last hour or two that Celeste has given birth to a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful baby girl. <laughs> If one thing interests Australians as much as looking back, it has to be looking into the future. In 1981, Towards 2000 popularised technology with its interesting and easy approach. The robotic egg sorter is by night a concert pianist. Towards 2000 has moved with the times and through several TV stations and is now known as Beyond 2000. Well, I'm fully alight now and uh, I can feel a bit of heat but it's the fumes coming across. It's quite disturbing really. Any time you want. Okay. It wasn't until Burke's Backyard started in 1987 that infotainment became lifestyle. Its unique blend of entertainment and information gave it a broad appeal, making it a big hit with primetime audiences. I've known this hairy little mite for nearly 30 years. He's shared with me his gardening tips, his joys, his hopes, his fears. When the creature from the Black Lagoon bursts up out of the water in a horror movie. The odds are he's bursting up out of a peat bog. Only one at a time over the bridge. It's a little bit wonky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll... Uh... Oh, yeah, I think, I think it'll just about take me. Right, um, while we're passing this large tree over here, I wonder if... Oh! Oh, I'm sorry about your bridge. Well, that's OK. Let's well, I mean, with, uh, that's... your cameras I'm worried about. Darling, do this ready. But is it that late? Gosh, you're right. Time to go home. With the success of Burke's Backyard came the lifestyle explosion. There are now at least a dozen lifestyle shows covering all facets of our lives, from making money to spending it. The share market's a bit like this roller coaster at Australia's Wonderland. Sure, it can go up, but just as quickly, it can go down. So take a good look at it. You'll never see it like this again, because everything's changing. First up, the fun bit. Using a bit of clever cosmetic work, this 20-year-old kitchen will hardly recognise itself. If I could talk to the animals... I'm sharing a pen here with some Tassie Devils. This is about a two-year-old male, and you can see what he's doing to the end of this coat of mine. They've got the most powerful jaw of any mammal and he's getting closer to my legs than I know of anywhere in the world. This is a yachty's paradise. Over 50 islands, perfect blue water and no crowds. And that's because nobody's found this place yet. With so many islands, there are endless places to check out. Coral reefs, deep holes and caves. Even if you've never snorkelled before, this place is guaranteed to get you in. While lifestyle programs show us how we can lead our lives, there's still a fascination with the way average Australians actually live. And so we have the new breed of infotainment, reality-based shows. I don't know what he was thinking, that's horrible. Well, that's, that's the one you designed, wasn't it? No, it's not the same pearls I had. I know, Carly, I don't... That, I put them in the bag, I don't know where they are, doll. Well, they look I... shit, I'm not wearing them. You alright? Getting a woozy? Mm. Okay, right, this one. Yeah. Oops. 
Can I have a bit of a hand? We were wondering, would you like to take Lucy out for a cuddle? I'd love to. Can we? Whether you call it infotainment, lifestyle or reality based, it all comes down to the same thing, enjoyable education. Like a sugar coated pill, we don't realise it's good for us because we're having too much fun. Little wee da fly, I'm little wee da fly, straight from rubbish tip to you, spreading disease. Coming up later in the show, the commercials that we were sold on. Oh, Mr Sheen, oh Mr Sheen, just to spray on wooden items they will gleam. And next, we get into the groove with the Pick of Aussie music shows. Six o'clock, there's gonna be some singing and a whole lot of swinging. Everybody, it's a six o'clock. Oh, yeah, yeah, rockin' time. Who was the host of the music show, Six O'Clock Rock? Pop music shows have been part of Australian television from the very beginning. Today's programs are a far cry from the early shows as they've adapted to changing tastes and styles over the years. Let's see how it all began. The first show was one enjoyed by the whole family. Clean-cut singers and dancers performed in the studio. The hosts were respectable and the productions basic, but varied with a touch of comedy and a few sing-alongs. Now we come to the part of our sing-song where everybody sings. Are you ready? All right then, here we go with a whole lot of songs about singing. Let's all sing like the birdies sing. Don't know where to go to. Why don't you go where fashion sits? Put no Hi, fellow Hi Fi. Welcome once again to the Hi Fi Club. It's nice to have you with us. Rock my baby on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. An early pop show that stood out from the rest was Bandstand. It was amazingly successful running for an incredible 14 years. It was more adventurous, especially in fostering young music talent of the time. So keep an eye out for a few famous faces making early television appearances. We know you're going to enjoy the show, at least we hope so, because uh, it swings all the way. Hello everyone, I'm Patsy and Noble, a singer of songs, songs for you. I do not exaggerate, I think your singing is just great. I say let me elucidate, I like the way you enunciate. The way we carry on intent to just embarrass all our friends. And that is how we'll still be years from now. My buddy and me, oh we belong to a mutual admiration society. My buddy and me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why should I spend money on a show or two? He wears the dustman's hat. He wears gold blinding trousers, and he lives in a council flat. Look at the applause, do your trust, dear old Sadie. Look as though you know he'd be a pretty lady. Come on, here it's time to have a party. We're going to the beach, we're gonna have a beach ball. Got a car full of hot dogs and a trunk full of soda. We're gonna keep it swinging until next fall. A program aimed at teenagers was Six O'Clock Rock hosted by the king himself, Johnny O'Keefe. Again, it was performance-based, but not as polished as Bandstand. 
The show had little rehearsal and some acts were chosen in the morning and went to air that night. So I expect to find a few foul ups, but after all, it was live. Come on everybody, it's six o'clock. <laughs> Come on everybody, it's time to rock. <laughs> what happens next? Oh yeah. We have a gentleman on the program that appeared with us once before to uh, sing a song called, um, what is the name of the song? Only Love Me, Only Love Me. Let's welcome uh, a cat who needs no introduction to the thing. We'll tell you a little more about him later. Well, she comes from Tallahassee. Woo! She's got a high class chassis. Woo! Baby looks a little sassy. Go, go! Here's one that breaks the live performance mould, shifting towards reviews and interviews with stories on fashion and trends, a style other music shows adopted later. So let's take a look at the innovative GTK. <laughs> Have you ever heard Mick Jagger singing Play With Fire with his strings? You are playing with fire if you're playing with Mick, they say in the trade. Daddy Cool looked like being the success story of the year. Why has it happened? Well, I think it's happened because, uh, in the first place, we started the group as a, as a relief, for, and it turned out that it's a relief for everybody else, too. Yeah. The well, what audiences. Come and see the real thing, come and see the real thing, come and see. I don't think Russell and I were a good manager artist team. We argued a lot, but, um, but I think that we both benefit from it. for one which some say was the most influential pop show of all time. It pulled in the biggest rock names from around Australia and the world to perform in the studio. So do yourself a favour and check this one out. Have we got a show for you. This, is going, this show tonight is going to make Ben-Hur look like a B-grade movie. You watch a Hollywood movie right there on my TV. Hollywood movie right there on my TV. Well, that's a really heavy Any TV show can have its fair share of foul-ups and accidents. And on pop music shows, this is likely to occur when an act mimes to pre-recorded music. Everyone tells me to know my place. I can't do this, I can't go there. I'm just a circle in a square. I don't fit in anywhere. It didn't always matter if the miming wasn't spot on, because we were usually fascinated by the song itself. But TV's influence on popular music has meant that over the last 15 or so years, we've seen the growth of shows dedicated solely to music videos. You may not like the song at all, but you'll almost certainly be entertained by what you're watching. I had an idea of, of putting on a, uh, an alternative to Kitty's cartoons for Saturday morning uh, yeah. for, ki for the young people to watch. Yeah. Not just for te uh, teeny boppers, but for people of all ages, a music show. And so we invented the first pop clip television program in the world. Good 
Good evening. Welcome to MTV. Our opening night. I'm Richard Wilkins. I'm Joyce Smithers. And it's a real thrill for us to be able to present the Australian debut of MTV. It's ironic that with today's high-tech video clips, MTV America is having its biggest success with a back-to-basics performance called Unplugged. It leaves us with a question. In which direction will music television go in the future? Only time will tell. Question in our 40 years of TV trivia competition. Don't forget, entry forms are in Woman's Day. Have your answers in by September 30, and if you're right, you'll be in the running for the fantastic Toyota Prado RV four-wheel drive, the Toyota Starlet Life, and the Sony Stereo TVs. The last question is, in what year was World Series cricket first broadcast? Tonight we're looking at four hours in the life of Australia, very much as it happens, and wherever it happens. It's not a documentary, let me assure you, it's a glimpse of the rich tapestry of people and places, the characters and colour of this big country of ours. Nineteen eighty-eight, our bicentenary, and Australian television comes of technological age. In a staggering mobilisation of manpower and equipment, the entire country is linked via satellite. It's the biggest television event ever undertaken in Australia, and possibly the world. Documenting four hours in the life of our country required 1,000 technicians and presenters, with live crosses to over 70 locations. But in the late 50s, when Australian television was in its infancy, a broadcast of this scale would have seemed an impossibility. The attack gave New Zealand's artillery battery their first chance at going into attack. They manned howitzer cannons at the base. Television may have been as modern as tomorrow, but early news services were from a much earlier era. The news was often read straight to camera without film of the actual event, like radio with pictures. Sometimes they even read straight from a newspaper, which presented some problems. Long paper. <laughs> Must get our papers in order here. Even the weather report was a quantum leap from the satellite pictures and state-of-the-art computer graphics of today. And for Melbourne, Overcast and cool, few showers overnight, and tomorrow, uh, fresh westerly winds. Won't draw that. But it didn't take long for the industry to get into technological gear. The launch of the Telstar satellite in 1962 meant that we no longer had to wait days for news film to be flown in from overseas. Instead, the world could be beamed into our living rooms live. Big news stories can be a catalyst to change. President Kennedy's assassination in November 1963 not only affected us politically and emotionally, it helped the local television industry to expand. The Kennedy tragedy sped up the linking of all capitals by coaxial cable, allowing the free exchange of footage. The aircraft crash landed on Stockton Beach near Newcastle, New South Wales. Here's a direct report from Sydney by coaxial cable. Quick thinking by a pilot today saved two lives and a TAA helicopter worth 30,000 pounds. Television was now the information medium. Its immediacy and intimacy has put us on the spot as witnesses to the biggest news stories from Australia and overseas. We're left with indelible images of horror, elation, despair and joy. Happy birthday, Australia! By first light on Christmas Day, Darwin looked like Hiroshima. It was time to cause maximum bloodshed just after... Bushfires which claimed 62 lives and destroyed... ...from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. Yesterday... 
All my troubles seem so far away, yeah Night looks as though they're here to stay Oh, I believe it's so To leave office before my term is completed is abhorrent to every instinct in my body. Well, may we say, God save the Queen. I, Andrew Albert Christian Edward. Take me for the Charles Arthur George. In 1991, we had a bomb's eye view of Baghdad in our living rooms, watching the Gulf War as it happened. 22 years earlier, we had already witnessed an equally incredible accomplishment from much further away. 20 days here, the eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The whole country stopped to watch the moon landing. And although the images were stilted, we had the best seats in the house. By 1984, we were chatting over breakfast with space shuttle astronauts while they orbited Earth. Paul, how does it feel to be up there on your first flight? I guess it's a little different from uh, the hot dog surfboards on the Australian beaches. No, actually, it's a whole new environment, but it's been remarkable just to watch both myself and everyone else as to how quickly the, the person reacts and adapts to the new environment. Within a day or so, you're floating around here just like you've been living here all your life. Just much like living a surfboard, it doesn't take much more. There's little doubt that television is easily our preferred news gatherer. It allows us to feel part of the story, bridging distances and time to involve us in momentous events. Of course, technology can be used to convey any moment of high drama. And this is no more evident than in sport, a long time Australian love. In fact, the starting date of television here was brought forward by a year to allow the Melbourne Olympics to be covered. Australia's Cuthbert is well clear from teammate Matthews gaining ground on Stubnik of Germany. A photo was called for, but Stubnik was second, Matthews third. We were able to participate in our athletes' triumphs and disappointments as never before. But our vantage points weren't exactly front row seats. Even in the early 70s, most sports were covered with only a couple of angles, usually remote from the action. Nineteen seventy-seven witnessed a revolution which would not only rock the foundations of one of our most traditional sports, but would alter forever television's coverage of all sports. World Series cricket combined big business and show business with the innovation of multiple camera angles, putting the audience right amongst the bouncers. That's a good delivery from Lawson. Probably the biggest recent innovation is the miniaturization of cameras. Not only has it given us a whole new view of our favorite sports, it blurs the lines between athlete and spectator. Even as spectators, we relish the glory, the pain, the triumph and the tragedy of sporting competition. Only television rivals the atmosphere of being there. And it is through television that we remember the last 40 years of sport. I tell you what, any boss who sacks anyone for not turning up to die is a bum. <laughs> Tebos got it. That is the record. Perkins driving home for Australia. It's cold.
looking for something to do in between the programs but don't need to go to the toilet or make yourself a cup of tea? Then we've got just the thing for you. Watch the commercials. Each of these television advertisements is a finely crafted work of art with a made-to-measure jingle, guaranteed to keep you humming. Louis the Fly, I'm Louis the Fly, straight from rubbish tip to you. Spreading disease with the greatest of ease, straight from rubbish tip to you. You need Uncle Sam, you need Uncle Sam. And you go, said you go. And I said, no, you go. And soon he was back with the pack. And then Dad hit the track. So we ate in the back, feeling better inside. Yes, you get 43 beans in every cup. A Nescafe, real coffee beans, that's all there is. In Nescafe, 43 beans in every cup. Make Nescafe the old coffee instant coffee. Let's have another cup taste. Oh, Mr. Sheen. Oh, Mr. Sheen. Just a spray on wooden items, they will gleam. We're happy little vegetables. Happy little vegetables. Happy little created commercials are just a thing for every family. Sounds too good to be true? Well, just listen to what these satisfied celebrities had to say. Behind these doors sits the soup set. Like it? Nice second rate, White. Second rate? I like Heinz. I like Heinz. <laughs> Those three ladies are going to be walking all over it this afternoon. I like Heinz. I like Heinz. Yes, there ought to be a better word than delicious. On nutritious. I like Heinz. <laughs> Here's another word. Zip on the doom dot. Hear all the news. Three mighty new victors in color for you. That's not all. <laughs> I'd like to show you something really new in shaving. And believe me, if it wasn't something important, I wouldn't be doing this. Men on the go, like Richie Benno, use Smoothex. The best shaving break I've ever had. Great songs and famous actors. Who could ask for more? Well, there is more. We guarantee that every commercial break has enough laughter for the whole family. These were loaned to us by an elephant at the zoo. I think they're his spare set. <laughs> what a lot of rubbish. <laughs> Get those out of the thing. Introducing King G Odd Jobs, mm -hmm. the lightweight overall for around the house. Get a pair and you're halfway there. I can do it without that. The message is simple. Uh... <laughs> Tough enough to protect you from sharp projections. Pockets for everything you need and lots of room to stretch. You have the other half of that, have you? I've forgotten it now. So you get the fuel savings of a smaller engine with the twin cam performance. Gives you a smile every bit as bright and white as McLean's regular. Irresistibly white and... Uh, uh. Bright colours, this wall from you. Look at them all, Wally. Yeah, I know. Well, what about giving me a bit of a hand? All right. <laughs> you get a lot to like in a mouth. That couldn't be right. <laughs> oh, no. I said cream. Oh, I am sorry, Wally. I thought you said green. Uh. With the new fresh taste of mint. As for whiteness... <laughs> I don't know. Look after you on these quaint old aeroplanes, do they? Quant, sir. Shellgar Dog Shampoo is specially designed for dogs. Look, it's not just any old shampoo shoved into a bottle with dog written on it. No, sir. We never got lost once coming here. I mean, 
They're not all convicts, are they? Aussies. Quiet, Rover. Look what Shellguard has done. <laughs> For Bert Newton, since I shampooed him last week. Oh, not on Gwen, darling. Isn't it? Go on, just say. Uh... <laughs> I think she fancies me. <laughs> his, his little nose is moist. <laughs> yeah, it is too. <laughs> and he finds it damn near impossible to go past a tree without that. No, no, no. <laughs> but that's not all. You'll also receive free four erotic moments, two sexy suggestions and a muscly man in his underdax. I straight away invited her into the office so she could actually watch one being done. Sick of Rex. <laughs> Ants pants. Unbelievable underwear from Holbrook. Mm, my goodness, it really is hot. About 180 degrees, I'd say. Um, pants, please. Guess what? I'm wearing no knickers. From now, no knickers for me. Tap cola, beautiful to you and me. Cause every can has less than two calories. And all you can see through my clothes is, well, all you can see is me. Coppertone. So beautiful, so brown, so fast. I'm honestly wearing no knickers. No knickers. From Holproof, of course. Like every great show, a great commercial must have a memorable ending. Something that wraps everything up in a neat package which isn't easily forgotten. And we leave our look at classic ads with that little something that sums it all up. The slogan. If they were any tougher, they'd rust. That's why oils ain't oils. You know you're soaking in it. Avon calling. Chop some wood for the barbie, will you? Remember the arrow guard. It's finger licking good. Oh, what a not so squeezy. And remember, there's no substitute for quality. Beauty nuke. Everybody loves Speedo. New Fab is lemon charged. With that famous glass and a half. You ought to be congratulated. Well, that's almost it for tonight. Four decades is a lot to fit into only one program. So on Friday night, we have something really special. In part two of our 40 years of television celebrations, we'll have more highlights from your favourite shows. Vinegar tits. <laughs> nice, nice. Can I play autopsy with it? You're playing ping pong. I told you it was ping pong. I believe that your daughter is a friend of ordinary scene in Patterson. Eddie Patterson? Has he been hurt? Well, no, he's fine. Physically, at least. You know, P-O-T. P-O-T? <laughs> well, the T is there. You just don't pay any attention. <laughs> And you'll see over 60 interviews with legendary TV personalities from all over the globe. We were all babies. Nobody knew what we were doing. We all, we all just went on and, uh, and did it. He's been caught with his bat trunks down, and he's going through a holy weenie roast. I never really had a childhood. I wasn't allowed to be a child. We had prettier kangaroos, which we used for close-ups. How can you be the sexiest man on television when you snore all night? Yeah. You can't be the sexiest man. And I was of a certain man. age, you know. And it, it was just a... There's no need to give, you know, the whole of Australia. Come on, do me a favour. 40 years of TV stars, Friday night on Channel 9. So the next 40 years of television. Oh, what a thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be sure and stay tuned now, you hear? <laughs> You'll be amazed at what some of them are up to. We leave tonight's show with one golden moment that cries out to be played in its entirety. It proves the old saying that nothing succeeds like excess. So sit back and enjoy the incomparable Ian Turpy, supported by the Rhythm of Life dancers. Good night, everyone. Flip your wings and fly to daddy. Flip your wings and fly to daddy. Flip your wings and fly to daddy. Fly, fly, fly to daddy. Take a dive and swim to daddy. Take a dive and swim to daddy. Take a dive and swim to daddy. Swim, swim, swim to daddy. Hip, 
the floor and crawl to daddy. Hit the floor and crawl to daddy. Hit the floor and crawl to daddy. Crawl, crawl, crawl to daddy. Sing it indeed and dab and dab. Split it, split it, split it. Sing it indeed and dab and dab. And the rhythm of life is a powerful beat. Puts a tingle in your fingers and a tingle in your feet. Rhythm in your bedroom, rhythm in the street. Yes, the rhythm of life is a powerful beat. To feel that rhythm of life, to feel that powerful beat. To feel that tingle in your fingers, to feel that tingle in your feet. Yeah.